This is Deborah Johnson for Women at Halftime, and I'm passionate about helping women use their untapped skills, resources, and talents to create their ideal work and lifestyle, making a difference in their second half. Well, hello. This is uh, Deborah Johnson here, and I'm joined by my husband, Greg. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so much fun to have him on uh, with me. And this is a, a great subject of uh, the importance of nutrition at halftime with some tips. And uh, as we had recently done the importance of exercise, I thought we'd uh, get back to uh, spending a little bit more time on nutrition because it's so very important at this at this point of time in our lives. So uh, before I get started, um, I spent years and years and years and a lot of money figuring out a system on how to grow my business. And uh, I put together a little system of doing that and a guide together, even in an, uh, a guide in an online course called A New Way of Doing Business. And this is bonus time. And I have a couple of these times every year that it's bonus time. So if you go to a new way of doing business.com, you can get those bonuses right now and have access immediately to that online course. So make sure you do that, a new way of doing business.com. So let's get to our subject here the importance of nutrition. And um, all, most of us really like to eat, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Uh, well, there are some benefits to thinking about this, right? What are some of the benefits that come to your mind, Greg, in eating correctly and the nutrition? Um, first, probably you feel better about yourself uh, if if you um, are eating right because um, not only is your weight under control, but you feel like um, you're in control of an essential part of your life. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Whenever you're in control, whether you know it's in control of your office environment, in control of your yard, in control of your kids, um, you just feel like you're on top of life. Mm. And so uh, the same thing, you know, has to do with n- nutrition. Right, right. To where um, it's not just out of uh, out of control, uh, where sometimes the binges and all of that that happen. So. Uh, well, there are definite um, physical benefits uh, with preventing osteoporosis, uh, recovering from an energy uh, injury, and uh, staying fit. In fact, even just this morning, going through some stretches for the back and all of that is just to, you know, that's more an exercise. But also with, with our eating correctly, it helps it hand in hand. There. Yeah, I think um, something I've noticed through my ups and downs of life is that um, when my weight's under control, I have more energy, ah. which is just seems so counterintuitive. You would think that the if you, the more you ate, the more energy you'd have, yes. Yes. but uh, the opposite ends up being true. Yeah, and what we eat. I mean, I find this as well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, of course, in my case, uh, when I eat too much, it's. I'm never eating too much vegetables. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm always eating too much oatmeal cookies yeah. or your apple pie yeah. or ice oh, cream. You know, for pie. some reason, I never binge <laughs> on broccoli. Yeah. I tell you, my apple pie is hard for me <clears throat> to stay away yeah, from. Right. <laughs> I don't think I'll put that recipe in here for this this uh, episode. Um, I, I read that uh, coronary heart disease is the leading cause of health burden for men 45 and over. And then that's followed by lung cancer between the ages of 45 and 74. Yeah, I remember studying that too uh, in looking at the various causes of death. And heart disease perpetually, like every year, is way farther yeah. ahead than anything else. Cancer... Uh, lung disease, auto accidents, uh, you know, gunshots. Right. Uh, heart disease is actually the thing that brings us down. Right, right. And for women, uh, I mean, heart disease is even up there for women because, and that's actually surprising. We don't think that women would face that as much, but they do, especially because of the um, uh, obesity factors, which doesn't take much to get there, but. 
the uh, for women aged 45 to 64, usually there's the osteoporosis and breast cancer, uh, breast cancer especially between the ages of 65 and 84. Uh, but the prevalence of obesity it increases significantly in American women after the age of 40. Uh, that's you know as we notice, I notice the belly fat. You know, and there's all these these ads that come up about belly fat, and I know they're targeted at me. I, they must have. <laughs> it's so not fair. Everything bad ha- happens more often once you hit forty. <laughs> it does. So um, yeah, but the um, obesity. I mean, it increases sixty five percent between wow. forty and fifty. That's a amazing statistics. All of these statistics, I will have them documented in the article that goes with this. But, and it goes up to seventy three point eight percent if you're over sixty. How difficult it is! I mean, it just becomes more difficult. I'm eating the same amount, but I'm you know, I mean, why am I gaining weight? Why am I you right? Know? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't seem fair, does it? It's for the same reasons, the strength of my eyeglasses keeps getting stronger. <laughs> So um, maybe some of the listeners have noticed it's a little harder to break down the fat the older you get. Oh, boy. And we tend to carry a little extra body weight. And 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 part of that isn't just because we get less exercise. Uh, A lot of that is because our metabolism slows down. Yeah. And so, you know, this ties in with exercise a lot because exercise, especially... um, strenuous for you know 10 to 15 minutes Mm -hmm. a day will keep your metabolism up yeah 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 and uh kind of making sure that you keep your heart rate up i've had to do things and i've shared this in our um recent episode that was on exercise um but that i needed to get my heart rate up and keep it up so my metabolism would stay up and it's really it's helped me it actually hasn't made the scale go down as much as I wanted though. So I have to pay attention to the eating. What was our, our son Daniel would always say, you know, it's not exercise alone, mom. You got to do, do the eating. He was big on eating. Yeah. If somehow I could uh, move the shape from my drawers back up to my chest. Uh, it would be <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's lovely. So that's wonderful. So Anyway, uh, and especially in our abdomen and, yeah, the glute areas, those, those areas. So, um, anyway, um, according to the CDC, obesity statistics in adults was 42.4% in 2017 to 18, and the same for men and women. Now, we just talked about um, the prevalence of obesity, but this was statistics that 40%, 42.4% of the population uh, was um, obese, in, in at least beginning obesity. And this was related to the body mass index, the BMI over 25. It's considered overweight, weight, and over 30 is obese. Can you um, explain as an athlete uh, what that body mass index a little bit more for us? And when we're talking about the obesity because that just sounds you know when we think obese it's like well i i don't think i'm obese because that um that i'm comparing it with somebody that's you know i don't want to you know like have anybody like so discouraged if you're this much weight but if you're three or four hundred pounds you need to think about it uh you know (laughs) but well, basically, if you go to the body mass index uh, scale on the internet, um, mm-hmm. it's it's roughly your weight compared to your height, okay. and they've uh, assumed various uh, components of your weight that it, you know there's going to be x amount of muscle compared to fat right. in the typical person. Right. Right. And as an athlete, uh, athletes generally carry a little bit more muscle than. Uh, the average citizen Mm -hmm. and so athletes are going to in general weigh a little bit more unless you know you're only a long distance runner right but um if if you're carrying muscle muscle weighs a little bit more than fat and so um if you're uh, like on the board if you're a pretty good athlete but you find see your body mass index is a little high Mm -hmm. um if you're heart resting heart rate is slow and um and you, you know you, your flexibility and strength are good 
um, there's a good chance that it's just you're carrying a little bit more extra muscle than the mm. normal U.S. citizen. So you definitely have an advantage over me in the body mass index because you can't because you are an athlete and you have more muscle in your body mass index. Yeah, but that just means that my body mass is made up of more muscle than the typical average on the uh, the chart. Okay. That still doesn't mean I shouldn't look at it and make sure that you know I'm not carrying more more weight than I ought to, but um, I also have to factor in that you know some of that extra weight is in muscle. Yes, yes, and that's what we all aim for, even in our exercise programs, is to build on. You know, we don't want to lose the muscle; we want to lose the fat. Right. And uh, there's ways to do that. In fact, if you do not have uh, the nutritional timing and uh, some of that, those worksheets, the nutritional uh, timing compared to our fitness chart. I do have those free at goalsforyourlife.com forward slash goal dash setting dash worksheet. So make sure you get those. Yeah, everybody should get those. And and kind of roughly what Deb's talking about is is that um, if if you go through your day, generally have your carbs in the morning and then lower the carbs and increase your protein intake to where it's almost all protein and vegetables uh, after six, um, you'll find that that will help you lose weight. Uh, just cutting carbs out after six o'clock at night uh, right. before you sleep right. is a great way to um, to help things out. The other thing we found is, is that if you um, intake liquid protein right after resistance training, mm. um, you're after resistance training, your body is craving um, energy. Mm. And if you don't take in protein, instead of going after the fat, it actually g- goes after your muscle. Mm. So if yeah. you provide your body with protein intake, right after working out, Mm -hmm. um, it'll have the protein it needs and it'll burn fat, which is critical. So those two things, Mm -hmm. just at, you know, taking a a protein snack Mm -hmm. right after your resistance training, not Mm -hmm. so much after cardio, Mm -hmm. but after resistance training, Mm -hmm. and then cutting the carbs out after dinner. uh, Those two things Mm -hmm. will help you burn a lot of that belly fat. I think if you are listening to this episode, if you walk away with that, that I mean, that's huge right yeah, now. Yeah, it really huge. is. It really is huge. And re- oh, and by the way, carbs are buried in beer. Oh, Just wow. FYI, <laughs> okay. if you're, if you're going to drink, uh, especially beer, it's better to get it done before 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. So on your weekends... If you're going to enjoy beer, cut cut yourself off at about three and begin to increase your intake of proteins. What a great point! So when you when you uh, talk about a beer belly, well, if you if you leave it out, you'll have a better chance. And of again, the, you know, think what you eat with beer. Yeah, you know, typically it's pizza, tacos. You know, things that you get plenty of fats and carbs in. Yes. So, you know, the whole thing's accentuated. And, um, you know, it's weird how fast those things become habit and lifestyle. And, you know, we're smiling a lot while we're doing it. And then we wake up in the morning and look at ourselves in the mirror and go, oh, Lord. (laughs) And, you know, if you're like 18 or 20 and you've done this. for Well, yeah, but we got... Amped up metabolisms yes, when we're 20. We're, yeah. But once you read Cap 40, I tell you, and if you have those same habits, yeah. oh boy. Yeah. yeah. And my problem is the world outside me looks the same yes. as it did when I was 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing that's changed is what I see in the mirror. <laughs> okay. So you- So the, co- the cool thing is that means my wife looks to me the same as when I married her. Oh. Just FYI, you guys. That was... 
you know what? That was a really good thing to say right now. <laughs> so <laughs> what were we talking about yeah. uh, the other day when I was looking across at you and I was saying, you know. And you, you had this stunned look on your face I, going, I can't believe you're the same guy I married. <laughs> no, it was I something don't. like that. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was like, I, I remember looking across from you and saying my vows and you look a little different in there, but you're the same guy. <laughs> and then you did that nice comment for me to, oh, no, you look the same. <laughs> but I told you I'd never go gray, right? Yeah, it's so funny how my hair has turned gray and hers hasn't. I know. She looks exactly like when I married her. It's just amazing what happens here. So <laughs> we're probably getting a little too personal. No, I think we got some laughs out of that one. So uh, when you were, I love it that you mentioned the beers and the carbs because. When you are, um, you know, we have a son that plays uh, professional softball. And so, you know, when you're hanging out, and the musicians are the same, okay? So you hang out after the gigs. A lot of times you go and eat. Well, what time is it? Yeah. It's like 10 o'clock at night, 12. Or 12 o'clock, yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're ingesting all of that. And I know our son, David, now, he's, think, you know, he's at the point, he says, boy, it's a little harder to become a little You know, yeah. and he's not pounding. They're doing the light beers and the light things. yeah that, that still doesn't count <laughs> yeah, i know it's pretty funny so. yeah, you know there's a lot of carbs in a light beer yeah, so yeah. yeah you gotta look you gotta look at the labels what did i i used to think that low fat i could have the whole thing because it was low fat yeah but you used to think banana bread was a health <laughs> I food did, i did and homemade granola you know? <laughs> yeah homemade granola <laughs> oh my right. gosh you know how many calories was in that but i'd pour on the honey and all of the nuts and the seeds and I'm sure in every bite there were 500 calories. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was so yep. good. It was so good. So anyway, I I've had to just lay off some of those, <laughs> even though it's really good. Vacations, yeah. vacations, vacations. So anyway, but that's what, you know, as I'm talking about, you know, or we, we're hitting the subject of what's going to cause the increased weight gain. I thought the, <laughs> the comment about beer is a really, really good one. Um, but the high salt, I mean, especially women, when we think, oh, I'm ki- I've got water weight. <laughs> I've used that. Yeah, but high salt primarily is something that helps you maintain water, which increases your blood pressure. Yeah. And it increases your, your feeling of bloatiness. Yeah. But, you know, th- those are temporary weight yes. gains as yes. opposed to carbs and saturated fats. Right, right, right. Sugar. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, the alcohol and saturated fat, definitely. And and the sugar. And there's a lot of sugars. When we're talking about carbs, I was kind of surprised at this um, because I'm thinking, oh, I could just have as much fruit as I want. I love fresh fruit. But again, there's a lot of carbs in a lot of the and fruit. And sugar. And sugar. And if we eat that later in the day, it will tend to turn to more fat. Uh, so yeah, that that's why uh, sugars, uh, carbs are good breakfast cereals. Yes, you know if you're going to have your fruit with your uh, still cut oatmeal, mm-hmm. um, you know you got all day to burn that. Right. So um, right, right. You know that's a healthy choice, and and even though fruit you know has carbs and sugar in it, mm-hmm. it's it's good for you yes. because uh, it provides so many other nutrients and minerals yes. that we need. Yeah. And I think, you know, at first you feel like, okay, so you're like, um, you know, the Nazi uh, (laughs) nutrition person of just uh, having to be so strict. But once you get into some good habits and, uh, you know, having more salads at dinner with some of the lower fats and the more vegetables and more, uh, we love grilled vegetables, grilled fish and all of that. Um, it helps if you're into that sort of uh, system. And like this morning, as we are recording this particular episode, we had the um, the bacon that I love. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was really good, but we had it in the morning. And right. I only have that bacon, you know, we'll have it maybe once a week, a couple times a week. Right. So it's not like all the it's time. It's not every day. Yeah. Right. And I used to have, in junior high school, I had a BLT almost every day. That, and then after school, I had a tuna sandwich, and then I had, I mean, eating all the time. Just a little different now. Yeah, your it? dad used to say you guys ate like birds. Yeah. Vultures. Vultures, yes. Yeah, <laughs> what he said. Yeah, I'll never forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> Love my daddy, but oh my goodness, my goodness. So. He was pretty observant. Yes, he was, wasn't it? Well, we were fairly fortunate in our in our um, metabolism. So, And uh, low and saturated and trans fats, of course, are seeds and nuts, avocado, 
um, and uh, eggs. Even. Oh, you know, you should probably talk about fats. Uh, yeah. you, you don't want to stay away from all fats. You, no. you want to stay away from uh, tra- trans fats, but not avocado, nuts. Mm-hmm. What were some other ones? Uh, some seeds, uh, even eggs. Some people don't eat eggs. Uh, um, but, yeah, but those fats help you synthesize mm-hmm. uh, proteins yeah. effectively. Yeah. So, uh, you know, an avocado with tuna yeah. is actually really good yeah. and because it's going to help you not digest the tuna, but process the protein in the tuna right. so that uh, it feeds muscles most efficiently. Right, right. Um, I will put a little warning out just to watch calories still yeah, count. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, what was I doing? I was at it. You know, I love nuts, and I've always loved cashews and you know pecans. And you know, I'm from Georgia. I love mm. pecans. My <laughs> goodness. But you know, when you start start counting the calories, it's like, oh, I guess I should have had at least like a quarter of what I ate today because I think I ate my whole day's worth of calories in one sitting. Yeah. It's because they're so good. So just be careful about the calorie count. But yet they are very, very good fats. And avocado, too. I usually add avocado even on my eggs. And I just, yeah. you know, it's... Yeah, because eggs are protein and yeah. avocado is fat. And that's yeah. a perfect combination. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think our, our most important, you know, um, preventative here is just to get our mindset in, um, you know, our brain is very powerful. And we can train our brain, you know, to crave some different things, even though it's hard in the right. afternoon. Uh, many days I do feel like my chocolate, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, but even chocolate, if you mm-hmm. go with a, a dark chocolate as yes. opposed to the milk chocolate, yeah, yeah. um, you know, that that's highly effective and probably right. you, you need to think about, uh, you know, all the food groups, you know, for instance, salmon, you can get your, uh, omega threes in avocados, you can get your fats in, right. um, Nuts, you get a different kind of fat mm-hmm. that that helps feed things. Right, right. Um, so, you know, you need you know all all of these things, and God, in His wisdom, provided uh, the food sources to help you have a um, you know well rounded diet. One one of the things I have to make sure is I get enough iron, and spinach happens mm. to have enough iron to uh, boost things. We've found that uh, potatoes. Are limited in the amount of B vitamins, but right. uh, if you switch to sweet potatoes, yes, um, and don't load them with you know butter and brown <laughs> sugar, um, the uh, sweet potatoes happen to have a lot of vitamin B, Good. which is uh, mm-hmm. ex- extremely important to a, a healthy diet. So, right. you know, we we uh, you know like a crock pot full of uh, you know roast beef, onions, uh, carry carrots, celery, and sweet potatoes instead yes. of regular potatoes. Yes, uh, just subtle things like that right. can um, can really boost your weekly nutrition. Right, right. And in talking about meat, some people are you know they're vegetarians and all of that. I mean, we do even have red meat, but we don't have it real often. Right. Yeah, and so we will do it. You know, I'll do that, especially if we have company or something. I'll put on that you know pot roast into a crock pot. It's delicious, and there's you know it cooks you know all day, and then you put your vegetables in there. It's a great little dinner. So, and if you really plan ahead, and uh, to be able to do this, it's very doable. To have a very nutritious, uh, I'm, I'm so routine anyway, but nutritious diet throughout uh, each day. Right. You know, make it varied. So, and I think I'm such a, such one on routine is, uh, is a good thing. So, and I think there are three walkaways here is number one, kind of evaluate where you are. So you want to look at, you know, your, your, your body mass index, your weight, and just to kind of see where you are on the scale. I think admitting it. Uh, is, is a big deal. I know as we've uh, faced this pandemic, I did not want to get on the scale and I didn't for a long time. And But I, my clothes were still fitting. I thought it was just fine. And then I got on the scale and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, um, and I've noticed that it's a little harder to come down on that actual scale, even though I'm feeling better and I'm doing more uh, cardio right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still looking at both of those factors. So I want to look realistically and admit where I'm at. And so I, I'm not going to be discouraged by it. I'm just going to admit it. Um, and then number two is to put together a realistic plan. And I say realistic because you want it to work for you. Uh, what I'm going to do is different than you. You end up doing, uh, you're much more regular than I am about, you know, having your proteins around your workout times. Daniel's the same way uh, with the protein um, drinks. Yeah, but part of that is because we lift weights as opposed to just doing cardio. And it's important for everybody to remember that uh, cardio will amp up your metabolism for yeah. about an hour and a half to two after your your workout, whereas uh, resistance training will keep your metabolism going four to five hours. Ah. So you're going to burn more calories if you would, you know, go for a walk and then do some resistance training. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot of people do light resistance training. Mm-hmm. You know, you should do as heavy as you are comfortable with. Yeah. And realize that if you're over fifty. It is impossible, almost, to mm-hmm. put on much muscle mass. Yeah. You, you just can't do it. <laughs> so don't be afraid of becoming muscular. Yeah. Uh, if you lift as heavy as you can, uh, what you'll find is you'll just get more toned. Yeah. Well, yeah and you've told me that. And, bur- because- and burn calories. And burn calories. As I look at the fitness magazines, I'm going... Oh, I don't want it. <laughs> There's no fear of me yeah. looking like Those that. guys are all 30 and on steroids. <laughs> yeah, I know. And Photoshop. And Photoshop, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And actually, see, when I was in the, when our gyms were all open and I had my regular normal routine and I was doing a lot heavier weights. Yeah. And that was part of it because I'm not burning as much. Uh, because I've just been doing more cardio instead right. of, and I do some weights, but they were they're not nearly as heavy. So I think adding. Yeah, I would encourage everybody to add yeah, resistance training. Even more. You know, if 50, yeah. tw- uh, ten to twenty minutes of resistance training will greatly help. Yeah. You yeah. maintain your weight. Yeah, loss. yeah. So that's number two: putting together a realistic plan, and then you want to actually create some way to evaluate regularly and not to beat yourself up. And I think that evaluation, um, as we, because we're going to evaluate where we are, but really where we want to go. And I've talked about this in another episode as well. Just make a game out of it and some sort of, you know, with yourself and thinking, what were you saying this morning that you're going, okay, your next little goal, you have this next little goal. I I think small incremental goals are important. You know, one for guys can just be the next belt loop. Yeah. You know, if you lose five to eight pounds, you'll mm-hmm. drop a belt loop. Yes. And and yeah. that is fun. Yeah, it really is. And I, I like being able to, you know, not see my stomach every time I put on a certain dress. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <You know? Right. laughs> Sticking out. So anyway, and so I'm going to remind you here um, to get that goal setting, those goal setting worksheets. They're readily available. Um, goalsforyourlife.com forward slash goal dash setting dash worksheet. So you can get all of them there. There's actually four on that page you can get. And um, so I hope this has really helped you. Next week, I am um, talking about celebrating fun holidays with small group gatherings. And as we are coming out of our isolation and um, the COVID-19 and all of that, um, I, I have some very good ideas um, that I'm approaching in that episode uh, to really make our our holidays celebratory and fun. I got through that word, celebratory. That's a good one. So um, would love you to not only listen, but to subscribe and even write a review. I love reviews. So, and you can reach me anytime, Deborah Johnson. You can reach me at womenathalftime.com, goalsforyourlife.com. And thank you again for being with me today, Greg. Oh, sure. Oh, just so much fun. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Yes, yes, I think so. We hit on some very fun things and um, appreciate your input on this especially and uh, a lot of fun. So Deborah Johnson signing off and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on Women at Halftime. Visit goalsforyourlife.com or womenathalftime.com for many more resources, downloads, and programs, or to get in touch with me. I'd love it if you leave me a review and tell your friends. So until next time, this is Deborah Johnson, signing off.